welcome to IOD TV. You picked a really exciting time to um, be joining the fun and festivities because spring release number one is finally here. It hit Stackish shelves this week and we welcomed um, one, two, three new transfers and four new stamps to the family. And we're gonna use one of those stamps today. So I'm so glad you're here and I hope that you um, learned something from this. The most important thing to remember is it's only paint. You can start over. Um, quite often I have an idea in my head and then sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. This is one of the ones that, that worked. So I'm gonna show you what we're doing. And this is using the chrysanthemum stamp. So here's the overview. I took a board, this is a 12 by 18 inch um, sheet of interior sanded plywood, three quarter inch thick. And I used um, IOD air dry clay on this section right here. And then I took sections of the chrysanthemum stamp and impressed it into the clay. I did a wash with black, wanting that to really stick in the recesses where the sections of the stamp are. And then I mirrored that in the opposite color scheme on the other side. So that's what I did. I'm gonna show you this part on a scrap piece of wood, and then I have a smaller piece like this at the intermediate step so you guys can see the whole process and we don't run out of time. So three quarter inch sanded plywood is exactly as it sounds, three quarter inch. Um, and wood is super, super expensive right now. A really nice alternative are the Wood Gallery Blanks by IOD. So this would be, you don't have to go to the hardware store, your big box store, have them cut wood. These are the perfect weight. They're really well done. This just happens to be an 11 by 14. And these would make the per perfect canvas for this type of project. Before I get started, I want to show you the stamp that we're using today. So this is the chrysanthemum stamp, and it's a two-sheet stamp. I already have cut mine apart, so when you open it up, there's a thinner sheet. You remove that. Then I take and I cut each element off on the heavy plastic backing that it's on. With new stamps, you want to take some fine grit sandpaper and just run it across it to kind of break that seal that's on the stamp. If you don't, your medium bubbles up a little bit. This works because of the space between the elements of the stamp. So this is a large open space. It gets a little bit more dense in here, and you're gonna see that that's not gonna impress nearly as well. But where it's nice and spaced out, you're gonna get a really nice impression. So let's get started. I'm I took my board and I painted it in a coat of white paint. Any paint would work, wouldn't matter for this stuff. If it has built-in sealer, doesn't have built-in sealer, mineral base, not mineral base, wouldn't matter. Then I'm gonna take some air dry clay and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you just how I do an impression. So I'm gonna cover a section of this board with the air dry clay. What I do is I use my brayer as a rolling pin. This is my um, favorite brayer. I have like three of them go on my IOD brayer. With clay, I'm just gonna use this cheap one that I happen to have. You could use a rolling pin. I'll take a sheet of parchment paper. This one's very well loved. And I will roll my clay out on the parchment paper. So I'm going to take just a round circle of the clay 
and I'm going to smush it out onto my parchment paper. You don't need a thick amount of clay. This clay is so wonderful that the last thing I want to do is waste it and not have it for one of my Sid Dickens tiles. I'd be crushed. So now I just think of like using a rolling pin. I am going to, I am not, I'm a baker, but I don't like, well, I haven't baked in a long time. Who am I kidding? I have never rolled out dough, but my mom, I watched her when I was younger and she would dust her rolling pin with flour. So we're just gonna dust the brayer with cornstarch. And then it just makes it so it doesn't stick. And I'm just gonna continue to roll this out. It just broke right there. No big deal, just adds more character. And I would use as big of a piece as I thought I'd, I'd need. So it's not, it's not thick, if you can see. So then I just take, I've had questions, do you have to glue the clay down? And I can tell you that there are times that I've thought I didn't need to glue it down, that the clay would stick onto my wood and it didn't withstand the test of time. So I just take the couple of extra seconds and glue it down. So I'm using Type Bond Quick and Thick. And I like to cover the whole thing so it sticks well. Just get a nice coat on there. So I'm just going to put this right here. And I didn't roll out a big enough piece, but I'm going to show you why that doesn't matter. That when I did my original piece, I wanted it to do this, kind of be narrower on this side and longer on that side. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I do this next one. So, let's see, I'm just going to have it going there. And let's say that, you know, I, I don't want it to go that far over. So I'm just going to slice that piece. Maybe I'll bring it into this section. And what I don't want to happen is to have abrupt edges on here. So I'm going to take my brayer again. I'm going to dust it because now I've got glue on here. And I don't want it to stick. You can see why I don't use my good brayer. I don't think it would matter. But, and then I'll just roll it out even while it's still on here. And that helps smooth out where maybe you matched up your clay. So the other thing that I paid attention to were my edges. Okay. So I don't want these abrupt edges. So I just take my finger and just blend them. And it's just gonna make that background look like it's less purposeful and more worn over time. So I'm just blending those edges in. It does not have to be perfect. Now the fun part. Um, I have a smaller board so I can't use my big large stamp. So let's, I want, let's say I just want to get some elements from this one, this fun like swooshy part. I am going to use some cornstarch on here. It just makes it a little bit easier to lift off. You don't have to. And 
and I'm just going to put and now I'm going to press it down and I really want to make sure that I get a nice impression so I take my brayer and it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt your IOD brayer to use it here at all but you don't need to, like a lot of times I can make an impression good enough just by pressing on it. The thicker the clay, the deeper your impression. And this is what you get. Isn't that so cool? So then I just keep going. Because you, you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to bring a leaf off here. So I'm just pushing it down. I'll show you how easy this works without using the brayer. Now this one I did not dust. And you can see I still don't have any issues. I get a really pretty impression. One of the things that I'm doing on the piece that you're going to see today is going off of my clay area. And that to me is what really makes the difference. So like what I'm going to do right here, there is not much clay in this area, but I'm going to take this stamp and I'm gonna impress what I can, and then I will continue this piece with paint. So that's all I got, this little section right here. So once I do the wash, you're gonna see, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to paint the rest of it. So right now, that's how I do that step. So I'm gonna set the other side. What I would do right now, even while the clay's wet, ideally I let it dry because I don't like my clay to um, lose any definition. I paint it with the same base color, which is a bright white. Then I seal it. So a coat of paint first, roll out my clay, type on quick and thick to lay it down, dust my stamp pieces, press them in, white paint, sealer. And that's because of the wash that I'm gonna do. So fast forward to what I prepared yesterday. So I got that part done. I used um, a bigger element here. I used a smaller one here, some leaves here, and then a smaller element there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a wash. And that's how I'm going to get... There's only going to be a little bit of drying time today. So this is a, um, a soft black, if there is such a thing. And when I do a wash... I cheat kind of and I just add the water right to my plate. That allows me to be able to vary the intensity that I get. And I'm going to use one of my smaller brushes. And what I'm looking for is I want the black paint to get into the crevices. That's what I'm wanting here. So I'm more dabbing into those low points because I'm going to wipe back the high points. I'm going to want this to dry before I wipe it back because otherwise you get a smearing effect and not a clean release. This step, in my opinion, it's important that you use, a, well, I, I think, a clay or a mineral-based, chalk-based paint 
they just remove easier. If you're gonna use a latex based paint or a paint with a sealer, you're gonna have less time to pull this layer off and it won't come off as cleanly. Now I'm painting the other side too because I want that area to be black. So now I do have to dry this. So I'm gonna take my heat gun It will dry very quickly. So again, if I didn't dry this, I just could get more of a smearing, which is really not what I want. So now I'm just going to wipe back and I am intentionally trying to get the paint off of the high areas. And I just want the black paint for the most part to stay in the low areas. My clay isn't even when I roll it out. Um, I, I want that to happen because then I get some variation in those high points. I could spray my board, but then I'm going to get water in the low points, which is not, you know, kind of defeats the purpose. But this is when you're really going to start seeing the plan here. Here's kind of that transition part. I don't want to have an edge where I just kind of stop. I want that to transition. So right here is a spot that I was talking to you about where it's closer together. You still get definition but not like you do in the parts where the stamp is more separated. So I just want to kind of get off this edge to where I'm going to build. So the, one of the things that's just a little thing I'm going to do different is I'm actually going to hit a little bit of this side. So if you look like right in that spot right there, Hopefully you can see the very depths. Okay, so now I'm gonna get rid of those boards because I don't want it unbalanced. Thank you so much. So now it's building. I have to try to remember which pieces I used and match them up. So I know I used that one. So this one went here and this one went here and I don't think I'm gonna need to use a mask and then I have a leaf not this leaf this leaf okay I'm going to start with I'm gonna move these to the side I'm gonna start by building off where I was so I intentionally put half on the clay, half off the clay. I'm going to use my same white base coat. And I'm going to use my good brayer. I'm going to use my parchment paper just so that I can work on top of my project without getting it yucky. So, which was the one I was starting with? Oh, apparently this one. This one right here I'm going to start with. So, I'm going to get paint on the entire stamp. So, you want to get just enough paint on your brayer to cover it without it dripping. So I coat it once and then I hit it again. If you're using them um, repeatedly on the same project, I find you don't need to do that. 
and I'm going to try and line this up with where it was originally. And then I'm going to press it down. I like to use like a paper towel because my hands get sticky. I'm shifting a little bit and it's hard not to because you're on clay. And that's how you get the transition. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. But I like where the white goes over the other part. It just adds another dimension. So okay, so this one is going to go right here. And if I don't get it perfectly, that's okay. Now... I want to keep building. So I'm going to see whatever other flowers I have here. I love this one. So I think I'm going to bring this one in. I think maybe like this. Really important what I think to mention is you're gonna to wanna to seal this. And I think that this is important, Judy, thank you. Um, I spray sealed. Whenever you have um, contrasting, mineral-based, clay-based paints like this, if you go to seal, chances are you're going to pull some of the black onto the white. If I spray seal first, and those of you who have been watching me know that I love Rust-Oleum Matte Sealer, um, I spray that. I can seal over the top of it and nothing is going to run. So that's just, I think, worth mentioning. This one is only spray sealed. I could add, you know, um, my favorite water-based sealer. I appreciate you guys being here. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Check out the new IOD products if you haven't. And I'm Lisa. Um, my Facebook page is Sweet and Sassy Treasures. I'm live two to three times a week. I hope you'll join me, but take care of you. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye, everybody.